GPD has updated their MicroPC2. There's a number of features that are different from the original MicroPC that had come out a few years ago. Jumping straight into the specs and seeing one of the larger enhancements that's easily visible over the original MicroPC is this 7-inch 1080p display. It is a native landscape display, but it also has this T-based hinge, which allows you to put it into tablet mode and making better use of a native portrait display. However, if you were looking at it for gaming purposes, you will have all of the issues that crop up from a native portrait display, so do keep that in mind. However, playing a lot of DOS-based games and putting wrappers on them has no problems whatsoever, and I kind of recommend playing DOS-based games on this anyway. Back to the specs, another enhancement that we find is an increase in RAM, up to 16 gigs of RAM, and featuring Intel's N250 APU. This APU is actually pretty nifty. In a lot of different ways, it's very similar to the older GPD Win 3's chipset, the 1165G7, which is an older Tiger Lake chipset. So when we start going through benchmarks, it's gonna start cropping up that you're gonna see that a lot. And we're also gonna take a look at benchmarking games to give you an idea of where this fits, but I, I kind of want to tilt your perspective on that a little bit because I have a little bit more to say on that. Back into the specs, finishing it all out, we have a very low weight at 490 grams, two USB Type-C 3.2 Gen 2 slots, a micro SD card slot reader, a 2.5 gigabit RJ45 port, an HDMI 2.1 port, Wi-Fi 6 capabilities provided by the very excellent Intel AX210 chipset, rounded it all out into around about a 27 watt hour battery. More or less, that is the specs that make this up. And there's a there's a lot to like here. And I know that a lot of people, especially for the audience of my channel, why I tend to lean more heavy on the gaming side. I do want to make a quick note here that this is far and away more a UMPC than it is going to be any type of gaming handheld. While it can turn into a tablet mode, if you had any aspirations of using a telescope controller, you're going to need one that is Bluetooth only. If it has a USB-C port out of it, it's not going to be working on this at all. So I just wanted to kind of point that out and i don't think that this is actually a good medium for playing games when we talk about price and performance and we'll talk about price and performance in just a second i want to talk more initially first about comparing this device to the original gpd micro pc and one thing that is clearly missing from the original micro pc that i really enjoyed having on the original micro pc was a built-in rs232 port so if you liked that particular component from the original GPD micro PC that is no longer here. So you would need to use an adapter. And if you find adapters not really working for you, then the micro PC, the older micro PC is still gonna be one that you would have to lean on. Otherwise, when we take a look at the layout of the keyboard, it's pretty much similar to the original micro PC. However, the original micro PC had a tighter cluster of numbers and, and F1 buttons on the top left. For what it's worth, I much prefer the design direction of the micro PC2. Additionally, for the backlight of the micro PC2 as well, it has four intensity settings, so you can make it pretty dim and make it as bright as you want. Whereas the original micro PC only had an on or off setting, even though it was fairly evenly lit across the entire keyboard, same as this it's the same is true for the micro pc2 you can toggle how bright the micro pc2's keyboard gets outside of missing the rs232 port we are also missing a fan switch the original micro pc allowed you to completely disable the fan that is no longer an option on the micro pc2 but i don't think that that's actually necessary because the fan is a lot quieter than the original micro pc and how low the power runs on the device itself when you're just generally using it, the fan is exceedingly quiet. So I don't think that it's all that bad that we lost that fan, especially if some people aren't paying attention, you could have that fan off when you actually desperately need it, especially when we're pushing up to uh, the 15 watt cap that is on the micro PC2. Outside of those two differences, everything is pretty much a doubling. We're at a 1080p display, which is double the 720p display of the original. We have a seven inch screen instead of a six inch screen. The N250, Intel N250 platform is far better than the 4100. The, we have 16 gigs of RAM, where it's a doubling of eight. My version has four gigs of RAM, so we have four times more RAM there. I had 128 gig storage on my micro PC. We're at 512 now. So everything is either a doubling or a quadrupling, and that's pretty much the same across all the board. While they still have a very small device that is contoured and slim and very light. Again, one of the reasons why I would lean harder into this is more a product for umpc fans instead of gaming fans it the only gaming fan that i think that the micro pc2 would apply to 
is actually people that want to play older Windows games or even DOS games. In that er arena, it actually shines because we have all of the components necessary to play all of those types of games where we have a keyboard and mouse at all times present. And when we're playing those types of games, they translate perfectly and run at exceedingly low power on this platform. Now that's not to say that this machine is a slouch by any means. If we take a look at the Cinebench R23 results, we are again, if we take a look at single core results, we are close to where Zen 1, Zen 2 is in single core, single threaded speeds, which is fairly decent for how little power the device use. And when we go into multi-core results, what's interesting again, we actually see that Intel 1165G7 pop up at the 15 watt mark. And we're using 15 watt in the N250 platform. So we're pretty much exactly the same where we were on this older platform and so far as multi-threaded so if you're thinking about the types of applications that you can run and the performance that you'd get the intel 1165g7 is actually very performant the only difference for the 1165g7 is that we could push more power into going up to 20 watt 28 watt whereas we're pretty much capped at 15 watt because the cpu clocks cap out and there we could push more power all we all we please it just won't do anything so when we take a look at that and try to stress test the machine and push as much power into the it as possible when we do like cpu stress tests even when we're pushing like 16 and 17 watt which is this absolute apex of power that's going to take you're going to find that we're basically at like 75 80 degrees celsius where you're not really anywhere in danger of any type of thermals on this machine and it handles it quite capably on the flip side of that when we're pushing all of this power and we're looking at thermals and stuff when we take a look at the thermals of the device, especially compared to the original micro PC, the original micro PC actually gets overall hotter in terms of feeling. It wasn't a hot platform by any means. You can hold it just fine. But when it's on the micro PC, we have hot spots on the micro PC, but overall because of it, it's larger. We actually have it overall being far more cooler in so far as in the hand, how it feels in the hand. So it's a much better improvement in terms of overall thermals, especially how you're holding the device. When we think about pushing how far that's going and regular battery life usage, typically on general types of productivity type of stuff, it, can, it kicks itself into a very low gear. So just doing YouTube and browsing and stuff, you're not really going to be using all that much power, but the general case battery life, even best, best case battery life that you're going to get out of the micro PC2 is going to be around four hours of battery life. So I just want to kind of paint that picture for you because if we start pushing more power into this device and really making demands out of it, you're going to get closer to about an hour and change of battery life. So the battery life uh, differences here are at like pretty much a max of like four and five hours. Typically uses are going to be like three to four hours. So just to paint that picture for you, typically you're going to be maxing out at around four hours of battery life. Generally, you're going to be between two and a half to four hours of battery life just because how little power the device takes. But you can actually push up to 15 watts on this device, 16 watts, and then get around an hour and change of battery life. So that's pretty much your range of battery life on this device. And again, all of the thermals that you saw was pushing it to its max thermal. So we don't really have to worry about that either. For the keyboard testing, because the device is actually a little bit wider, I do have to stretch my hands a little bit more. And I'm getting around 35 to 40 word per minute score when using every key. So commas, exclamation points, pretty much everything that I've been testing, I'm anywhere from 35 word per minute to 40 word per minute. So that is completely thumb typing. So just using my two thumbs and that is the speed that I'm getting. And depending on how fast of a thumb typer you are, you can pretty much gauge how fast you're going to be here. I am not the fastest thumb typer by any means. And there are people that have been far, far faster in in terms of thumb typing. So keep that in mind if you are a thumb typer, this is the same type of experience. I typically like it. And also when playing DOS-based games, like I had told you about, using that keyboard and thumb typing translates perfectly fine and, and something that I actually love about the device. The layout of the keyboard I find to be superior to the original micro PC, especially the layout of the trackpad and the mouse buttons, where it falls very comfortably on both of my thumbs as well. So I find that to be great just for general use, but also again for DOS-based games and pretty much every game that I could play. You think about RTS or moving around with the mouse, or moving around with cursors or touching with a keyboard. All of these translate fantastically well on this device. Now, Again, I really want to stress that this is more for people that are UMPCs and not someone that is looking for a gaming device. When we start looking at it from gaming benchmarks, we can clearly see that at the very low end of power, the GPD Micro PC, the Intel N250 platform, actually does better than the 1165G7, so the Tiger Lake. But after about like 9 or 10 watt, Tiger Lake starts taking a lead and starts taking off. But even when you take a look at the Steam Deck at its early wattage, it clears both of them. So when you start 
thinking about the price of the micro PC2 being at $500 and the Steam Deck you can get at that price as well. If you were looking at this from a gaming perspective and like needing a controller, so now you have to buy a telescopic controller as well. With a telescopic controller, you're going to be basically the same size as the Steam Deck already is. So value-wise for a gaming machine, I do not think that this is very recommendable. If you had any aspirations of doing this, I personally wouldn't recommend that. Now for general application and general use, using it for entertainment purposes, I had a person ask me to test out Mango on this out in direct sunlight, and it actually works very well. So when we're in direct sunlight, one of the things that I want to point out here is I changed the exposure on my camera to properly reflect what I was seeing with my own eyes. So what you're trying to see as best as I could, what you were looking at through your video right now is as close of an approximation as I can get in real life as it was. It is exceedingly readable on this device. And not for nothing, when you're holding the device in tablet mode, it feels relatively close to being an actual like holding uh, manga. So I I don't know. I, I find that one bit to be really fascinating and something that I was not really thinking about. So uh, kudos to the person that mentioned uh, for me to test that out because I think it's actually a bit of a winner. So really what this all comes down to as like boiling up, how can I recommend the micro PC2? The micro PC2 is far and away leagues better than the original micro PC1. The one caveat here is that we no longer have that RS-232 port. So if you were doing any technical work and needed that RS-232 port that is no longer there, you're going to need dongles. And that may exclude you from looking at this. However, if you were the type of person that was looking for had to be the smallest UMPC that was also worthwhile to get. We have really good CPU performance. It will it will drain your battery. So do have be plugged in when you're doing that. However, for general use, you should be getting around three hours of battery life and still have very good performance because we're in that same tier as Tiger Lake with the uh, 1165G7, which was very, very performant. So it's really good CPU cores, actually genuinely very good GPU cores. It's just that we can't really push clocks on either one. So we're kind of, not getting enough from that particular angle. So from the gaming side of things, I love this device far more for older retro DOS computer games rather than newer computer games. If you're going to be using this for emulation as well, you could do that as well, but then you're going to be carrying around a controller with you as well. And you can also do things like putting it in tent mode or whatever. However you want to position this is totally reasonable and just fine. And that's pretty much where this review comes down to. I absolutely love the micro PC too. It is in a niche of its own. It is for specific people. This is not for people looking for the best gaming value or even the fastest gaming. Even on the lower side of TP TDP, the Steam Deck is going to beat this in so far as GPU side. When we get to CPU side, so for emulation and older games, this is going to win because it'll sit power on the CPU side. So that is really where this thing finds itself. But really where the value is, is just how small, light and comfortable it is at all times to use. So if you are the type of person that loves UMPCs, and I am the type of person that loves UMPCs, I love this form factor and I have no desire to use this out for more modern PC games. Gaming, I think this is the ticket. Thank you to my Patreon members as well as my YouTube members. Your support really means the world to me, guys. I hope this video was informative. As always, guys, thank you for your time and thanks for watching.